Hey guys, Crypto Spook here. Uh, I'd like to introduce a little segment I'm thinking about calling Crypto's Tech Talk. Uh, so today, NVIDIA released the NVIDIA Titan X, which is kind of confusing because they literally already named something the Titan X uh, just two years ago. Um, and then, if you'll remember, it was very quickly superseded by the 980 Ti, which was in fact more powerful than the card that was much more expensive. Um, I'm wondering, are we going to see the exact same thing happen here? Are they going to drop a Titan X and then, you know, three months later they're going to come out with the, um, the 1080 Ti, which would use perhaps a full GP100 core instead of GP102 like the Titan X is using? Um, I've got a problem. I've got a big fucking problem with the NVIDIA Titan X 2016 edition. It is not HBM2. Why is it not HBM2 is my very sincere question to you NVIDIA hardware designers. I've been waiting and waiting and hoping and praying and seeing little tidbits of information come out about this card and any potential 1080 Ti which they release and they keep saying it's gonna be a DDR5X card which honestly is great because it's much better than DDR5 um, but it's still not HBM2 they've got the capability, they've got the manufacturing, Samsung started making it, Hynix is making it, Crucial's making it HBM2 is available in very much so the quantities that we want in this product but they're not releasing it I assume that's because if they release an HBM2 GP102 based card, that means next year they won't have a single damn card to put out, and that frankly kind of makes me mad. I mean, they're intentionally neutering this card so that next year they can redesign and use GP100 and then put HBM2 on it, which pisses me off because I don't want to buy a product now and then next year have a better one come out. So let's talk about the specs on it. The current king of the hill, if you'll have, is the GTX 1080, and it has 2,560 CUDA cores, 1607 base clock, 1733 boost clock stock from the factory. It has 10 gigabit per second memory speed with 8 gigs of GDDR5X, 256-bit memory interface with a maximum theoretical bandwidth of 320 gigabytes per second. The Titan X has 3,584 CUDA cores, 1417 base clock, and 1531 boost clock. It has the same 10 gigabit per second interface with 12 gigabytes of GDR5X. Now it comes with 384 bit memory interface bandwidth, and the memory bandwidth is 480 gigabytes per second because of the increased memory interface width. I'm <laughs> I'm happy to see this product come out, but at the same time, I'm just so depressed because they really have not come out with HBM2. I mean, if they don't come out with HBM2 on the 1080 Ti, well, right, let me rephrase that. If they do come out with uh, HBM2 or even HBM1 on the 1080 Ti, I would be highly surprised. It's not going to happen, and that's a damn shame. Um, I really like... NVIDIA. I'm, I'm a little bit of a fanboy, and that's for one reason, because their hardware is better, usually. And I think this year, I may wind up not going with an NVIDIA product. <laughs> it's, it's, not their, it, it's not my fault. It's, they didn't do it. Um, I don't think ATI is going to come out with a comparable product either that uses HBM2, because Polaris just came out with their 480. They haven't unveiled anything that's mind-blowing or uses everything that I want it to have so this is just kind of a depressing showing it really is I understand why they did not include HBM2 if they included HBM2 they would, then they would have to entirely redesign the PCB of this card um, my issue with that is it's not that big of a deal I mean if you're gonna be making a completely new card and changing it from a GP 104 core to a GP 102 it wouldn't be that fucking hard to change the memory interface from GDDR 5x over to something useful and that people actually fucking want like HBM 2 
You know, I kind of feel like we have to blame ATI for this at least a little bit. ATI, you really need to step up your game with your complete lack of a high-end performance comparison slash derivative uh, of the Titan X and the TI. You're just not putting out cards that compete, and thus they can get away with doing things like increasing the price tag on this $200 over the last one. They call it an irresponsible amount of performance to have this Titan X, and while I would agree that it is clearly at this time one of the most powerful graphics cards on the planet, uh, I still don't think that justifies a $1,200 price tag. That's, uh, <laughs> that's $100 per billion resistors, apparently. This, this chip says it has 12 billion resistors on the GP102 processor. It has a TDP of 250 watts, and it's just... It's, it's good. It's a great card. I would take one if somebody said, here, I'll give this to you for $800 or $1,000, maybe. I would probably pay $950 at the max for this card. But uh, we haven't even seen any performance specifications on it. And you know what we saw with the last Titan X? The 980 Ti came out just a few months afterwards, and it actually had less CUDA cores and better performance figures than the Titan X. So I'm wondering how many Titan X fanboys we're going to offend when they come out with a 1080 Ti. Well guys, um, let me know what you think below. Are you interested in the 1080 or the Titan X? If you are or are not, why? Um, also, if you like AMD, what do you think that AMD is going to put out that is going to compete with any of these products? Um, let us know in the comments. Until the next one. No HBM2? Are you fucking kidding me?